Hey y'all, good morning. Welcome to VW Family Farm. It's Andrea here. We're about to go catch up with Ben and see what he's up to. We are going to get our fall plant starts in the ground this morning and thought we'd bring y'all along, show you what we're planting, how we're gonna go about it, and all that good stuff. So Ben is in here getting our hoss plow ready. Uh, we're actually gonna use it to make a hill to plant these plant starts on. So um, I'm gonna kind of flip the camera around, show you he's changing some stuff out, and then we're gonna go get started. I know it's a tad dark in here, but we're in the garage. He's getting the plow ready. Well, instead of using our tiller hiller that I made to go on the back of our rotary tiller, if you hadn't seen that video, we'll link it above. But uh, instead of setting that thing up, we're gonna just make a small hill because pretty much rainy season is over as far as big heavy rains uh, like we get in the early spring when the plants are really small. So we're gonna use the, the Hoss two wheel plow here, but instead of using the cultivator plows, they've got these plow attachments that go on there that will make a, a raised bed also. These things will go in there two different ways actually. They'll go in there this way, which that one's that way, this one will be this way. <clears throat> or you can reverse them and put this one over here, this one over here, and it makes a furrow. So just whichever application you're looking at doing, all the parts are easy to change out. It come, even comes with a handy dandy wrench. Okay, so we're learning as we go. So these plows have a R and an L on them, meaning right and left. So if you want to make a hill with this plow, you put the right plow on the left and the left plow on the right. Okay, we gotta eat crow. Eat crow? You like to eat crow? Uh-uh, they're nasty. So for the last few minutes, we've actually been switching parts around on this plow because we didn't read the instructions well enough. It was put together wrong. It's fixed now, it's awesome. We've got the little plows on it. Um, I wanna show you that real quick. Uh, the way these things work is this is Wider at the front, narrow at the back, it's gonna throw dirt. It's gonna collect dirt and throw it in a hill right here. But you can move them vice versa, opposite of each other, and put them on there, and it's gonna make you a furrow. So they're, they got multiple uses on them. But one thing we did figure out is when I done the first video, I had Lane you know, build this, put it together when we got it. And he said the instructions, he didn't quite understand the, that first part. The channel right here faces up. Because if not, if it's down, that makes the handle so low. And I was trying to plow down here. <laughs> we got several comments. It was a little tougher with the handles down here, but now the way it is. Which, what really, <clears throat> even people that knew us in person, the first time we used this thing, my aunt even said, she said, that thing kicked your tail. <laughs> so, and actually, I mean, she was right, it did. We got so it fixed much. now. It's going to be so friendly. much more comfortable with the handles up higher. Yes. So, I and we're really making good. this, um, we're making this pretty narrow where it's going to come together and make a hill because we want to be able to use it as a plow because it is a high arch plow. That means I can go over the plants once I plant them and get really close to them and work the ground. So Ben's going to make the hill and y'all can see that high arch. I'm trying to focus in on it. That's where um, I can go over the plants once they're planted and plow beside it. We'll just change the attachments. So I got the plants over here. We're using these hoss trays as well. Um, the plants really do come out of them well and they're super sturdy. We've loved them so far. So Ben's going to be getting this stuff out and tell y'all what it is. I'm going to be moving down through there planting it and then we're going to finish this up. So let's get started. All right, I was grounding barefooted on the way back up, but you don't ground in the driveway. Some big sharp rocks are my <laughs> You just learned that word, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> Around here, we call it just going barefoot. Going barefoot. Oh, me, they're still a little damp. I can feel how heavy they are. One thing they did say is if you let them dry out a little bit, they do a little better, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a stick and there's one hole under the bottom I'm gonna push up and she's gonna plant. This is red cabbage. So if you want to start. Red Express. Red Express cabbage. All right, next we're gonna do 
how do you say that c-o-u-r some kind of blue cabbage this right here they pull out so easy so much easier than the uh, little six packs that you get all right next we're gonna go with some brunswick cabbage and these chinese don't need as much room as like a head of cabbage heads of cabbage are gonna spread out chinese tend to grow up more so they don't take up quite as much space they still get pretty big though all right i didn't put the brunswick next we're gonna go with this chinese Ooh, that one's gonna be tender it's really small after the chinese cabbage now we're gonna go with the brunswick I don't know how to say it, so that's what kind of lettuce is going in. Think you're going to have plenty of salad greens? Yes. All right, next we're planting some purple cauliflower, and these hoss trays are just working awesome. So uh, we actually were a tad concerned they were too sturdy, but they're not. The stuff just pops right out. We've been super pleased. That's that's our true, honest opinion. I'm gonna get these in the ground. They're still popping me more out to plant. Next, Durgis cauliflower. Next is snowball cauliflower. And a lot of this we've never grown before. So we're gonna give y'all um, a review of it at the end to see how everything did. Now that's all the cauliflower. Now this is Arcadia broccoli. Next, more broccoli. This is Waltham broccoli. Okay, I'm gonna finish this row up with kale and chard. Uh, I've got rainbow chard, it's really beautiful. And then we're gonna get busy, we're gonna give these a drink, and then we're actually gonna put the floating row cover on top of this. We're giving that a try, I'm super excited because we have a lot of worm problems on brassicas. Um, so I'm hoping this will allow us to grow organic um, cabbages, broccoli, cauliflowers, like we've never done before. So we're gonna give it a go. Got a few sugar snaps coming up. Hopefully we'll have a few of those. So we're at the end. Still got a little more space to plant the rest of the stuff or anything else we decide to plant for fall. So that is a long row of fall veggies. All right, next is string out a floating row cover over this. But before we do that, I got to go cut some hoops to hold the row cover over the top of them and I don't have none so what I'm going to do is make them out of the high tensile wire we got left over from where we built all of our electric fencing with cattle. So we got that to do and then here we go. All right so we're cutting sections of high tensile wire that we bought and used when we built the hot wire uh, perimeter fence this past fall. Um, and you see my nice redneck tape measure. It's just kind of scrap to us, stuff we kept in case we need it in the future, but I think it's going to work perfect for keeping this floating row cover held up. And I'm measuring six foot span-ish. Don't have to be exact because you can poke them in the ground farther or not as far. Just don't let Andrea walk around them. I've almost tripped twice. So the high tensile wire is in a, a tight roll and when you undo it, it wants to spring, but it also does still want to stay hooped. So my idea behind this is you Use take that it, to our advantage, huh? Yep, take that and work that into the ground. Work that into the ground. Now I've got a hoop over it. May not be Perfect. That right there is going to be our frugal way of making the hoops. All 
All right, it's working beautifully. I didn't know if this wire would actually hold it up, but it's doing pretty good so far. Ben's mom stopped by and we put her to work. She's helping us, so we love it when she stops by and, and wants to help us outside, but she hates being on camera. But she actually is allowing it because she's pretty far away and behind the roll of fabric, so. All right, it's getting super hot out here. Um, we are going down through here. We've got it all set up. We're putting the finishing touches on. We've got the hoops put up. We got the cloth spread over it. And now we're just going back and putting T posts every little bit down the sides, just laying them down to hold the sides down. Um, we learned that trick from Kevin and Sarah at Living Traditions. If y'all aren't watching them, you should be. We've been farming for years, but you can always learn stuff from other people. So um, give some of these YouTube channels a try and see uh, what tips and tricks you might can learn from them. So we are finishing this up. It actually looks awesome, doesn't it? I am I like very it. pleased. I think it's going to work great. Uh, this is something we've always struggled with is growing um, good quality organic uh, Broccoli, spring and fall vegetables. Yeah. Uh, cabbages. They just always, y'all know if y'all growing them, a lot of them's going to get eat up unless you spray them with something. And like cauliflower and broccoli especially. Oh. Um, I can't there's hardly eat it because of all the worms that get in it. There's I'm, lots of cracks and crevices that worms can get in, and my family is just not a fan of worms. So they don't, um, they, don't, uh, ap they don't make my appetite uh, go crazy. So I'm hoping this is going to solve our problem. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're going to finish this up and get out of this sun. We'll see y'all later, and God bless.